So in math, we want to find equivalent expressions to these radicals, but we don't want to have radicals in the denominator because our standard notation doesn't have a radical living down there. So the procedure for finding an expression, such an expression that doesn't have a radical in the denominator is called rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing. And what does it mean for something to be a rational number? It's not irrational. We don't have any radicals down there. So there's two different ways that we can rationalize a denominator. I'm going to take one example and show you both. So the first method, we want to multiply by one underneath the radical to make a denominator that is a perfect square. And then the second method, we multiply by one on the outside to make the denominator a perfect square. But in either case, we're working towards making the denominator a perfect square. And we're multiplying by a factor of one. So we're gonna take the square root of two thirds and try to rationalize the denominator. So on the inside, I have two thirds. It's underneath this one radical. And what do I need to multiply three by? to turn this denominator into a perfect square. We want to work with the smallest one that's possible. So what do we need to multiply three by? Another factor of three, because then it will be nine, which is a perfect square of three. We have those factors. But whatever I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top, because in reality, what are we multiplying by right here? One, changing what it looks like. So now we can evaluate that. I've got six up top and nine down below. The denominator is now a perfect square. We can evaluate them individually. And my denominator evaluates out to three. And up top, we can still have a radical up there. We just care about the denominator being rational. Being a positive whole number can't be zero down there. The other way. What else could we do? So I have the same radical. I'm going to show you we're going to get the same answer out. I'm going to go ahead and split it up, and I'm looking at root 2 over root 3, just so we can look at the individual pieces. And what do I have to multiply root 3 by to get out a rational, to make it a perfect square? What do I need to multiply by? Root 3. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So what do we have? When I'm multiplying my radicals, and if my radicands are positive, we can combine them together. So up top, I have root 6. Down below, what am I looking at? Square root of positive, positive, 9. Are we getting the same thing out? Yeah, just in a different way. So up top, we have root 6. Down below, we have that rational number 3. So after a while, we'll start to recognize when it's easiest to do method 1, when is it easiest to do method 2. So generally, we stick to method 2 when that radical is already split up. If I have a radical just in the denominator, we usually multiply by itself, top and bottom. So let's take a look at a few. We can always multiply by 1 to make a denominator a perfect square. We saw that in each of these cases. Here, we multiplied on the inside by one. Here, we multiplied on the outside by one. So in this case, part A, or the first example, rationalizing that denominator. So are my radicals already split up for me, like in method two? No, so we should probably try to work on the inside. So to turn 18 into a perfect square, what do I need to multiply 18 by? So think about, you know, the multiples of 18. 18 and 18 gives me 36, which is a perfect square. So I need to multiply top and bottom by 2 within that radical. So up top, I have square root of 10 over 36. We can evaluate them individually, square root of the top, square root of the bottom, which gives me out 6. And we need to look. 
are there any perfect squares that I can factor out of 10? Can I simplify that any farther? It's even, so if I was going to take something out, it would be a 2. So can I divide 10 by 4? No, we're all done there. Okay, and the next one, we have a radical just in the denominator. So which method should we use? The second one. I want to multiply on the outside since 8 doesn't have a radical on it anyway. All right, so what do we need to multiply root 7 by to get a perfect square? Root 7, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So again, multiplying straight across, I've got 8 factors of root 7. And we write the 8 first so it's not confused if it's underneath the radical or not. It's not if it's on the front, it's very obvious. And I've got the square root of 7 times 7, which is square root of 49, which evaluates out to 8 square roots of 7 all over 7. And we need to see, can we break that down any farther? It's as far as we can go. So go ahead and take those next two. Rationalize the following radical expressions. All right, so what came out of the first? I've got a big radical on the outside of everything. So I should be working on the inside of that radical, multiplying by a factor of 1. So to turn 8 into a perfect square, what do we need to multiply by? Factor of 2. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm looking at square root of 10 all over square root 16, which evaluates out to root 10 over Four. Simplified as far as we can go. And for part B, I only have a radical living down below, so I should use that second method. Multiply on the outside by whatever is down there. So out of the top, we get 10 root 3. And down below, what evaluates out of here? I've got the square root of 3 squared, which is 3. Done. And we have some more to run through just so we get some more practice. So let's look. For part A, we have a few different options. We can either turn it into a large radical or we can work on the outside. I'm just going to work on the outside. It doesn't really matter what we do. So to rationalize the denominator, what do I need to multiply by here? Whatever's down there. Root 2, whatever I do to the bottom, have to do to the top. So up top, underneath, what is my radicand? 3 times 2 gives me 6. And down below, it's now rational. What value comes out of root 2 times root 2? 2, one of our factors down there. And we're simplified as far as we can go because 6 is not divisible by 4. So we can't take a factor of a perfect square out. For part B, Again, it's already split up, so let's work on the outside. What do I need to multiply root x by to get a perfect square? Root x, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So in the numerator, we have root 5x. And down below, what comes out of there? Two factors of x. So x squared, and I'm taking the square root, got one left over. It's rational. We don't have any radicals involved. For part C, this one is a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to work on the outside, but if I multiply by root 12, top and bottom, I'm dealing with a large number. And I want to work with the smallest perfect square that I can. So what do I need to multiply 12 by? to get me to the smallest perfect square possible. So let's just try 2. 12 times 2 gives me 24. Is that a perfect square? No, so we'll go one factor larger. 12 times 3 gives me 36. Is that a perfect square? It is. So down here, instead of multiplying by root 12, that would get us there, but we'd have to simplify in the end. I'm going to multiply by root 3. Deal with smaller numbers, because I don't want to have to multiply 
49 by 12 and try to factor that out. So when we multiply by 3, what do we get out of here? I've got root 49, a to the fifth, and I'm going to leave it as multiplying by 3 since 49 is a perfect square. And down below, we've got root 36. So what evaluates out of here, my denominator, is 6. And what comes out? My perfect square of 49, I get a 7 out. And how can we break up A5? Into A4 and 1 left over. And A4 is a perfect square of A2. And what do we have left on the inside then? 3 and one more factor of A. Simplified as far as we can go. So go ahead and take those last three, rationalize the denominators. So in part A, we can work on the outside since it's already split up for us. What do I need to multiply root 7 by? Root 7 over root 7. So we get out square root of 21 all over what value? 7. Rational, simplified, we're done. Part B, what do we need to multiply root r by? Itself, root r, root r up top. So we're looking at the square root of 5r all over what? r. And part C, the very last. The smallest perfect square that we can work with with 7 is 49. So we just need to multiply by root 7 over root 7. And as we multiply straight across the top, this is already a perfect square. So what evaluates out of there? 8 times 8 gives me 64. Y times Y gives me Y squared. And root 7 isn't going to evaluate. So he's left over. And what is that all over? Root 7 times root 7 gives me... Seven. And we should see, can we cancel any of those? Nope, we're done there.